Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's September 30th, 2013, the day before the Obamacare deadline, and here's what we have coming up tonight. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, as the Obamacare maelstrom threatens to shut down government, Chinese creditors loom heavily over the new world order horizon. And the challenge is how to build a world order for the first time in history. Plus, the Obamacare kitty, the big jackpot at the end of the rainbow for the insurance lobbyists. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And as we begin tonight, we have news that the Senate has killed the House spending bill. Now, we'll talk about this more in depth and what it means in, for you and your family. But let's start with this article. If Republicans want to shut down Washington, they'll have to ask China's permission first. So let's break this down into chunks. First of all, the shutting down Washington part. They're saying if the Republicans like Ted Cruz and others don't want to raise the debt ceiling to just let uh, the Obama administration spend as much money as they want to, this is going to cause a shutdown of the world as we know it. It's pretty much how they're playing up. This can be some big ap apocalyptic situation, but it's nowhere near that. Yes, it will cost spending cuts uh, or forced spending cuts, not just on Obamacare, but across the board, things such as the military industrial complex. But don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these people saying that we we need to stop paying our soldiers, which is one of the most ridiculous arguments that comes up every single time we have this uh, this debt ceiling situation. The Obama administration says, well, we may not be able to uh, pay our soldiers. Well, how about you stop taking $7 million vacations? How about we start on that front? And moving on to China, let's, let's see, why do we have to ask China for anything? Well, for one, China has a monopoly on rare earth materials. They also control our film production. They demand edits of films like Iron Man 3 and also Red Dawn. But don't confuse communist Chinese viewpoints with the viewpoints of the whole Chinese population. That'd be like saying the Obama administration represents the entire opinions of America, which he may be somewhat of a figurehead, but he doesn't represent all of our ideals. But let's get back to the point of the government shutdown. It wouldn't be the first time, and it definitely wouldn't be the last. We've seen government shutdowns here in the United States before. That's right, Jakari. A government shutdown doesn't actually mean the government will shut down. It's a misnomer that creates this whole doomsday scenario when, in fact, key functions of the government are going to continue to operate. The military will be on duty and their October 15th paychecks are going to be covered if there is a delay. The vast majority of Homeland Security, the Coast Guard, Border Patrol, etc. will stay on the job. Taxes are going to be collected. Social Security and Medicare will function as usual. Garbage will continue to be collected. Schools will stay open. Air traffic controllers are going to continue to monitor flights. Of course, the TSA is still going to be sticking their hands down your pants. And the Congress and Senate will continue to get paychecks because we can't cut off their funding. So all of the essential functions of the government are gonna to continue to operate. Everything the Constitution authorizes the government to do will continue to operate. Even things that the government is not authorized by the Constitution to do, they will continue to do those things. This is not a doomsday government shutdown. The only people that are really gonna feel the effects of this will be non-essential federal employees who are gonna get sent home with unpaid leave. So that is definitely terrible for those employees. I think it's about a third of government employees, but it is by no means a doomsday scenario for America. This could potentially be a good thing. While it's implemented, it'll help us actually balance our budget by trimming the fat across the board. But of course, who doesn't want the U.S. to balance its budget? Who wants to continue raising the debt ceiling and having us pay this in insane amount of interest on our debt? The banks the mega banks, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, those who have a vested interest in devaluing the dollar and destroying this country with astronomical debt. Back to you, Jakari. But it's not just us here at InfoWars who are concerned about this. Dr. Ron Paul said Americans would benefit if Obamacare was defeated. As I write this, it appears that the federal government is about to shut down because the House and Senate cannot agree on whether to add language defunding or delaying Obamacare to the continuing resolution. Despite all the hand-wringing heard in D.C., a short-term government shutdown, which doesn't actually shut down the government, will not cause the country to collapse. Any American people would benefit if Obamacare was defeated or even delayed. Obamacare saddles the American health system with new spending and mandates which will raise the price and lower the quality of health care. 
Denying funds to this program may give Congress time to replace this bill with free market reforms that put patients and physicians back in charge of health care. Defunding the bill before it becomes implemented can spare the American people from falling under the worst effects of this law. And moving from something that's not a grand bargain for the American population, but is a grand bargain for the insurance companies, insurance giants that wrote and lobbied for health care law cash in. Now, these are people around 2010, so hey, this may be a good thing to take a look at. And you can see Blue Cross and Blue Shield there, also United Healthcare and AET. Now, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, it seems to have some dips and valleys, but if you take a look at United Healthcare, they seem to have pretty steady growth, as does AET. So everybody says, no, this affordable health care, this free health care. I'll just tell you briefly my insurance story. Uh, before, you know, tomorrow, October 1st, for me to get health care, I'm a single, healthy male with no dependents, but it would have cost me about $200 or so a month. That's not even including my deductible. So which is to say, if something happened to me today, it would cost me a minimum of $700 just to you know, get checked out by the physician. God forbid something like that happened. But it's affordable and it's free and the trendies are out there saying that it's free and, you know, they're going to give me a new house and a new car and, and all that good stuff. It didn't happen. And I, I'm just so surprised that people can't admit that they've got condom. Maybe they still believe the lie, you know, because Obama gets up on there on TV with a suit and he reads out the teleprompter. So everything he's saying must be true, not taking a look at the hard facts that the, the premiums went up and all the deductibles went up. But nobody wants to talk about this and uh, people are going out of business. Dr. Jones, Alex's dad, is going to retire instead of continuing his practice because he doesn't want to have to put up with all this Obamacare nonsense. But we have this Obama website quietly deletes references to free health care. I thought it was free. Uh, you know, uh, everything's free here in the United States of America, but apparently health care isn't. Where can I get free or low cost care in my community? Asked the question. And the answer, if you can't afford any health plan, you can get free or low-cost health care and dental care at a nearby community health center. Now, after this was posted, it was screenshotted a little bit later, and it had said pretty much the same thing, except free was taken out of the equation. So you go from free to low-cost, whatever low-cost is. I mean, $200 a month isn't low to me, and that's before Obamacare. So you go from free and low to just low. Now you have low healthcare costs, which is completely ridiculous because nobody wants to pay $200 a month before they pay their deductibles. And that's me. I'm a 20 something healthy guy. I can't imagine what it's like for somebody with a family or somebody who has real physical health defects. Now stay tuned because after this break, Alex is going to be back with Jerome Corsi. This is an interview from today's day show, the Alex Jones show. And they're going to be talking about many things, including the assassination of JFK, but also this quote, affordable health care. And also Geraldo Rivera was a guest on the show today. So you don't want to miss that. But first, if you are a fan of this stuff and you want to get more information, you can go to the InfoWars shop and pick up Survival Shield. That's the new nascent iodine, uh, a new line that we're launching on InfoWars Life. You can get it at the InfoWars store, and you can see it right there. You can buy them in bulk. You can buy them individually, and we're starting to take it here at the office. I just ordered some myself, so definitely check that out. And also, if you like to support other areas of this broadcast, you can go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the nightly news, the special reports, the movies, the rants, and when we launch Obama Deception 2, that will be on there as well, so you don't want to miss that. So stay tuned right after this break for Geraldo Rivera and also Dr. Jerome Corsi. Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. And welcome back. I got to see the effects of Agenda 21 personally when I visited a local Austin business this past weekend. 
I'm here at Eastside Kayak and Tube Rental, where the city of Austin is threatening to shut down this local business for operating inside of a warehouse instead of a retail establishment and also operating what the city of Austin considers to be unsafe footpaths. There are many paths to the water, and the path we took was not difficult to navigate as long as you did so with patience. This was reported by local news, and according to the owner, he's not aware of any incidents stemming from the footpath. The owner claims that over 20,000 people have been able to navigate from his shop to the water safely. So once again, selective enforcement strikes the small business owner while allowing big business to continue to operate. Thus far, the shop owner has lost over $50,000 from his lack of water access, and this is what we see time and again with big governments working in cahoots with Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the action plan to destroy your sovereignty, and that is your personal sovereignty and your national sovereignty. This is the green mask, the environmental mask, because if you are terrified that you're killing the planet, you will be willing to accept any restriction. When the shop owner went to court to seek an injunction against the city, he was told by the judge that the judge thought it was a good idea, but the city could operate as they saw fit. The owner's last hope of staying operable lies in the debate of who actually owns the walkway to the water. Unfortunately, the owner is not available for comment. Hey, excuse me, sir. Have you ever heard of Eastside Kayak and Tube Rentals? What? Eastside Kayak and Tube Rentals? They're off Red Bluff? Yeah, I have. Well, the reason I ask is the city's trying to shut them down. They say they have an unsafe walkway. I haven't seen, you know, where they're located or what the situation is, but that's too bad. I mean, you know, I'm, I support all of the small business owners on Lady Bird Lake. And they also said they had an issue with them operating inside of a warehouse, what, what the city deems to be a warehouse, instead of a retail establishment. Really? Hmm. I don't know how you overcome that, but um, I'm going to go down there and check it out. We're concerned that, you know, we've, we've heard that some of these larger hotels, they have uh, deals with smaller retails, and which is, you know, I guess their business, but we don't want to shut down the mom and pops. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this, this town is built on small business, you know. It kind of thrives on, you know, supporting the small business mom and pop, whether it's a restaurant or, or what we do. We're a small business. We were just voted uh, this last week in the, the Austin Chronicle the number one water activity in 2013. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. President of uh, the Austin Rowing Clubs right over here, Shannon owns at Capital Cruise, Mike that owns Lone, Lone Star and everything. So you guys so, are a pretty tight group. Yeah, yeah. We're actually all having a meeting uh, next Wednesday about the Kabamba plant on the lake and how bad it's been this summer. It'd be a good opportunity for us to talk about what their situation is to maybe help them out. And if you'd like to learn more about Agenda 21 and how it affects your city, you can stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up a copy of Rosa Corey's Behind the Green Mask. I'm Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. My book, Behind the Green Mask, is a great way to educate yourself. You want to give this information to your legislators. Let them know about this if they don't know. And if they aren't willing to refuse to go along with the federal grants, with the plans, with the projects, then take them out. Remove them from office and do this locally. <laughs>
Well, you know, Alex, as a, as a former uh, hard left, long haired street lawyer, radical protester against the war and pro civil rights in the in the sixties. Uh, I have to say that the election of the first black president in our history was uh, was like a dream come true. It was like the fulfillment of uh, of uh, you know something I had worked for and never thought really I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. So when he got elected, uh, you know I, I can remember how emotional I was and how positive it was. But when you, you get down to it, you've got to govern, and I'm not you know part of it. I have no doubt is the fact that the uh, the the hard right in the Republican Party doesn't want him to succeed. I think that's part of it. But I think a lot of it is, you know, when I think back to the days of, uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson or even Bill Clinton, uh, where you had uh, well, certainly Reagan, where you had people that were, you know, they had their idealism, they had their ideology, they had their ideas, but they were pragmatic enough to make things work. And I think that uh, President Obama has been a terrible manager uh, and he's been, uh, you know, in terms of a divided government, he hasn't in any way reached out in a way he should. I think that a lot of what John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, and other Republicans are doing now is really appalling. But I think Boehner is right, the Speaker is right, when he says the President will negotiate with the Iranians, but he won't negotiate with the Republicans. I, 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 uh, I, I lament that fact, and I, I can't disagree that as of right now, if history is going to freeze right now, he would be regarded at best as a mediocre president now. Now, Geraldo, I didn't get you on to talk about all the amazing things you've done, but it is interesting. And since I've got you here, before we get back into politics, out of the 170 awards for journalism, including prestigious uh, Peabody Award, uh, Emmys, uh, national and local, and so many others. Uh, you know, people forget you haven't just done the big sensational stories. You've broken so many big investigative journalistic reports and been threatened, been attacked. Out of everything you've done, what are you most proud of? There's no doubt about it. I don't even hesitate. You know, there have been so many stories, thousands and thousands of stories. But the stories I did about the institutionalized, uh, we used to call them mentally retarded, now they call them developmentally disabled. There's no doubt about it. Helping to close America's institution and institutions for the retarded is definitely what I wish they would put on my tombstone instead of opening Al Capone's vault or sleeping with this one or that one. <laughs> to remember that uh, we help change the way the developmentally disabled are cared for in this country. Yeah, that's why I brought that up, because I just kind of spurted out the Al Capone vault, and I bet you're sick of hearing about that. It's like I'm sick of hearing I'm the guy with the bullhorn. That's like, oh, you're the guy with the bullhorn. <laughs> it's like, no, I've done a couple other things other than a bullhorn. You know, so much is going on in the world right now. My issue with Obamacare is it, it was written by the insurance companies. Their stock has doubled in many cases, uh, and it's going to be selectively basically enforced a lot of people are exempt from it. I mean, I've got a big problem with Obamacare. Why do you think the American people have turned against it? Because it's so complicated, because you're right about the insurance companies leading the, uh, leading the way. I know that, you know, I got a half a dozen people work for me in various, uh, you know, in this, this thing on, a, on the boat in the backyard, uh, my secretary, et cetera. And my health insurance for all those people has more than doubled in the last two years. And, you know, I, I can't think that it's not related to, uh, to Obamacare, and it's been so badly explained. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a socialist enough that I want everybody to be, uh, have access to health care, poor or rich. You know, uh, you know that old line, uh, the, the rich should live and the poor should die. You know, I'm not, I'm not for that. Uh, but I, I, I think when you turn something over to one industry uh, as opposed to another industry, they're going to do what's self-serving. Uh, you know, the bill seems, you know, incredibly complex, and why are they getting exemptions, and why is Congress not participating in the same kind of system as everybody else is? Uh, you know, I, I really think that it's a big, big, big bollocks. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't like this government shutdown either. I think that it's not going to accomplish anything. They've made the point uh, to shut down the government costs a couple of hundred million every day, just like burning the money in your backyard. I, I, I don't I, I, have, I appreciate drama, uh, but not when it costs taxpayers money. And it just seems that Congress is if you, we talked about the president being mediocre. If uh, Barack Obama is mediocre, the Congress is uh, is piss poor. If you get in my drift. Geraldo, I want to get into Iran and, and geopolitically where you think, because you're a smart guy, you've been in the Middle East, all over the place, you've been in Afghanistan, you've 
probably seen more combat as a journalism than even somebody like Oliver North. Because every time there's a war going on, I turn it on and you're on television. I saw a report about three, four years ago where you were in Afghanistan with the Marines where they admit that they're guarding the opium and helping basically produce it. And the argument is, well, this way Al-Qaeda won't get it. What do you make of uh, being somebody that, you know, covered the drug war from the time it began under Reagan to now that it's on record that our own troops are guarding the opium? Well, I think the big picture, you know, I've been covering the drug war since Nixon, you know, since 19, uh, 1970. Uh, we've spent well over a trillion dollars. The drug war is an absolute failure, an absolute abject failure. And if to throw people in jail, uh, you know, 20 years for that, they, there are women in jail in uh, upstate Bedford, New York. They've been in jail for 20 years because they carried an ounce of coke for their boyfriends and got busted because they got set up. And I think it's preposterous. Uh, I think that uh, you know, I'm very much of a libertarian when it comes to that. People have to sort that stuff out for themselves. I think it's just absolutely dreadful. Now stick around after this break. Alex Jones is going to be talking to Dr. Jerome Corsi about how we should force a government shutdown. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Dr. Jerome Corsi was on the Alex Jones radio show this morning talking about everything from the assassination of JFK to Obamacare. This book explains the entire history of it, why it happened, and ties it in to the coup d'etat over this country, who really killed Kennedy, available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Uh, and they are just harassing companies all over the U.S., shutting down factories, harassing doctors, even doctors that have small clinics. Uh, they're shutting down industry everywhere. That's exactly what the Nazis did, not just in Germany, but everywhere else. They shut down everybody but party members. So it's really a takeover of the economy. I think America's waking up to this, though, Dr. Corsi. We see the indicators of it everywhere. Uh, well, I think so, too. I mean, it ties in uh, to what you've been saying, Alex. I mean, the Lyndon Johnson was happy to use the false flag in the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident, which never happened, to fight the war and to allow the Vietnam War to be in the control of the CIA, also running drugs at the same time. The CIA has always worked with the mob in running drugs. In fact, one of the assassins I point out who was found in Dallas, November 22nd, 1963, was a a well-known Corsican international assassin who went back to the attempts to kill de Gaulle, who was helping with the mob and the CIA with the drug trafficking in Vietnam. There's another reason the military and the CIA uh, and, you know, big business wanted uh, Vietnam to be fought. Huge amount of drugs were going to be And brought. by the way, de Gaulle, uh, uh, de Gaulle was also trying to be president of France as well and not being part of NATO and wanted his own nuclear weapons. That's why they tried to kill him. Of course, and also it ties into, as you said, the, the current, I, I bring it forward because Kennedy was also going to eliminate the Federal Reserve. He was going to break up the CIA. Uh, instead, what we have is a world that the Nazis would have loved to have lived in with Germany heading the EU, not a shot fired, 
a, a regional government controlled by G, by Germany in the EU, transatlantic partnership, uh, the NSA listening to every conversation in America, and a huge welfare state. It's a Nazi model. And then wars. No one should be surprised. Saddam Hussein, no weapons of mass destruction. Of course, it was a CIA lie from the beginning. And it's going on today. Assad using the chemical weapons. More CIA lies. John Kerry beating the war drums as Secretary of State, when in fact the UN says it was the rebels. When in fact, you know, why are we going to support uh, the uh, Al Qaeda? Probably the best book I've ever read on the Kennedy assassination because it ties into everything else. And it's all the real info, too, because I'm quite a buff on the subject, obviously, hosting the show over 18 years. And this is something I would give people that were doubters. This will wake people up. Uh, going back to Dr. Corsi, sir, in the four minutes we've got left, we're obviously in a historic moment. Uh, it's obviously very creepy what the bureaucrats and regulators are doing. What, what do you recommend everybody do to really turn the tide? And uh, I think we have a chance to beat these people if we take action. But what is the lay of the battlefield right now? Well, I think this, you know, we're coming up in a government shutdown. And uh, a government shutdown, people should, you know, encourage um, the, our go the representatives in Congress, go ahead and shut the government down. You know, the government wants you to feel it's going to be so painful, everything so awful is going to happen. That they're going to, they want us to beg to keep the government open, not to shut it down, even at the pain of imposing Obamacare. There's another scare tactic to get the government over the final hurdle to where Obamacare cannot be defunded. This is a, a critical battle. People should be happy to see the battle going forward. Uh, this you know, all the economic pain we're suffering from Obamacare, the part-time jobs, the wrecking of private insurance, the increased costs of medical care, these were intended by the people who wrote the legislation. That's the hard thing to get your mind around. It was intended to wreck private health care. It was intended to send people more into the arms of government dependency. And the only way we're going to break it is to tell the government, no, we won't do it. We're not going to accept more debt. You know, go back to John Kennedy, trying to break up the CIA into a thousand pieces. We should never have fought in Vietnam. It was a false flag from the beginning. We've got to break up the Federal Reserve like Jack Kennedy would have done, start printing our own money with the Treasury, and tell these banksters we're not going to put more power into this new world order lie. You know, you, it seems like you've gotten more bold recently, Dr. Corsi. And uh, I would say you're on fire. Is it because you sense that the quickening, the crossroads, the jump point, uh, the event horizon is, is, is arriving? Yeah, if we've got a government in place that is willing to do a false flag in Syria on chemical weapons, lying about it, in order to put us more in the hands of al-Qaeda and jihadi mercenaries in Syria, if that's who our government wants us to fight with, if, if this final pushes on with Obamacare, if we're now at $17 trillion and about not to be able to buy any more of our debt, the only thing left is for these New World Order people to run naked to the finish line. And they're going to try to scare people into doing this. They're going to try to create such a crisis, everybody's going to feel they're going to lose everything. The only way you lose everything is if you give this government more power. If the government's going to crash, let it crash, let it, you know, if the bureaucrats, all million of them that are employed by us, go home and don't ever come back, I don't think anybody's going to really miss them. I'll be happy if they start with the IRS and keep them home permanently. That's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, but be sure to stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up a copy of Truth Rising so you can see Alex Jones' first confrontation with Geraldo Rivera. Now be sure to tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv tomorrow night because we will have a special extended edition of the InfoWars Nightly News with Alex Jones hosting a panel discussion talking about how the banksters have taken over America and giving you the in-depth report of the government shutdown. I'm Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.